I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, Six Pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. And this is a requested review for Lucas. Thank you so much for that. If anyone wants to request either any type of reviews or topics or re reviews, pretty much any type of stuff, you feel free to send a request either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is for a film called Barnyard from 2006, which I'll be honest, I was. I thought this film would be a lot worse than it really was because I thought it'd be in the same range as Home on the Range. I didn't even, that wasn't even a stupid joke I was trying to do. But Home on the Range, that film with Roseanne Barr voicing a, a cow, just like, okay, there's another farm animated film, more cows. This time the, the male cows have udders, which that's not how cows work. But that's because the director thought it'd be funny. So what, this is not a great film by any means, but this is a film that I didn't hate. And that's surprising on itself. It's a film that's not too bad for what it is. If you get past the really crappy animation. I mean, the story is pretty damn basic. Where Kevin James voices a cow who's a party animal... Along with all the other animals on this farm. They love the party hardy all the time. His adoptive father is Sam Elliott. Always nice to have Sam Elliott in there. One day Sam Elliott's character dies. Protecting some animals from these coyotes. And then as you did guess. You have an, your main character... Going from the party animal to taking responsibility. You can pretty much go where it's going. Now again, the animation I thought was junk. Cheap. Ugly. Most of the animals are ugly. It just... It did not look like a film that belonged in theaters. And this is by Nickelodeon. I mean, it looked like maybe even direct video would be too good. I just, this animation's... I've seen animation on TV better than this. That's not me being a smartass. That's me being genuine. And I think if it had better animation, it wasn't so fuddly, maybe more people would have seen the flick, honestly. Because it's written and directed by Steve Oderkirk, which that surprised me. Steve Oderkirk, I mean, he did Nothing to Lose with Tim Robbins and Martin Lawrence. I enjoy that film. Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, or Ace Ventura 2. Come Pow, Enter the Fist. You know, all three films I enjoy. And then the voice cast, Kevin James, Sam Elliott, but you also have Danny Glover. 
you have two from the 80s Ninja Turtles cartoon, Rob Paul, who voiced Raphael in that, and Cam Clark, who voiced Leonardo. Which is funny because they're two characters that interact the most with each other. Where Rob Paulson is his chicken, Cam Clark is his ferret, and there's a running dad where the ferret always keeps wanting to eat him, but then he keeps snapping out of it, almost as if he's a a former drug addict or a former alcoholic who gets tempted but has to fight his urges. It's not as serious as that, it's made to be much more comedic and silly. But I thought that was actually one of the, the funnier running dads in the flick. And like I said, other than the animation, yeah, not all the humor works. You just say that for most comedies. But I was surprised that it had a little bit of seriousness at times. In particular, like I said, when Sam Elliott, he seen this song, I won't back down. <laughs> And then, it seems as if, even though the animation was cheap, at certain points, now the animation wants to be grand, more epic, at least with the camera work sweeping through the countryside at night, when Sam Ellis' character is battling the, the coyotes as they're trying to attack these chicken coop, including these baby chicks, and he's battling them. It seemed like, okay, now you want to be more cinematic, where was the money for the rest of the stuff? Even design-wise, like a lot of the animals, especially the cows, they're very they're cheap. They look like a plastic toy, honestly. Yeah, like a plastic toy there. But the coyote, especially the main bad guy, he is specifically designed and to be almost skeletal and like an evil imagine like an evil looney tune cartoon but i know the guy's i i recognize the guy's voice i forgot his name though he's been in a ton of stuff and i would say he's the best design character the villain it's just one of those things that it does so have this unbalancing at Sally where again that coyote well designed good looking your lead character not so much with the stupid oh let's put udders on him because Steve Odekert thought that was funny if male cows have udders and again let's make him look cheap but that doesn't look cheap A lot of dancing and partying, but then boom, here's a serious moment where a character dies, because Sam Elliott dies defending it, and then they throw in jokes that are kind of clever, like during the party, you have some chickens throwing darts, as darts at the KFC colonel pitcher from a KFC bucket, I thought that was kind of clever. You have humor that's not so whatever, like for example, you have this character is it Shaggy, the, the, the singer? It sounds like him. Mr. Boom passed it. Don't know test it. And it's a big fat mouse, so the mouse is called Biddy Cheese. So yeah, it does have some groaners when it comes to the comedy. And like I said, the animation is ugly as fuck. A lot of the times. But then sometimes it's not. Again, like sometimes, oh, now you have camera pans and going through the countryside. I'm like, where did this come from? So it just, there's this weird uh, twofold act. But again, Kevin James, the voice work, I don't think was that bad. Like I said, it's always nice to hear Sam Elliott. Kevin James wasn't too bad. Danny Glover, always nice to, to hear Danny Glover. Rob Paulson and Cam Clark, being a guy who grew up with the 80s Ninja Turtles cartoon, it was nice to hear those voices. 
And again, the fact that they're interacting with each other, I, I thought that was kind of a running gag that worked. Where he keeps saying stuff, and the chicken's like, what? He's like, no, no, I'm just, you know, just saying. <laughs> it's a lot funnier than I make it out to be. Or just the way certain dialogue works out. For example, they don't know what the fuck vegan means. So they're trying to figure out what the hell vegetarian actually means. It means no dairy. No dairy. I love dairy. Does that mean I can't be a vegan? It does. It's a well. It's a movie that doesn't really have a lot of plot. Like the whole thing with the coyotes. That could be maybe thirty minutes of plot in this like eighty minute movie. The rest of it is literally just asides. Them playing golf, watching football, having big parties, again more dance numbers and scenin and this is an arbitrary subplot. Which I didn't mind because it was got a couple chuckles out of me. Where this dickhead kid is with his friends cow tipping. So then Kevin James, these others steal a car. They find the human and push his That's called boy tipping and they fuck with him. But yeah, I think the writing is helped a bit because Steve Oderkirk, I do think he's a talented guy when it comes to comedy. Might not be your kind of comedy, but if I did nothing to lose, come power into the fist. He's He's a talented guy. The ending, I thought, worked well. When I got to the ending, the finale, when the the coyotes have taken the chickens, including this very cute baby chick who is very friendly with Kevin James throughout it. Very you know, sweet, cute character. And when your characters get together to fight and... These even a part of me that okay I'm rooting for them. That's why I know okay the movie's working on some front. So whether it be Kevin James actually kicking these coyotes' ass, whether it be the chicken and ferret helping each other out, and the ferret even bites one of them, it's like hmm, tastes like chicken. Come back here, you four legged chickens, and finally now the ferret doesn't have to hold back and steers the shit out of the coyotes. Daddy Glover's this donkey, he's kicking the shit out of coyotes. There's even this little thing that they had earlier. I don't know what the fuck you call him. There's legs. Imagine if Cousin It had the energy of the Tasmanian Devil. <laughs> That's kind of what this thing was. There's also a couple songs that you recognize, like... I won't back down. Nice to hear that song. Slow ride, take it easy. Uh, other people, Courtney Cox, that's another voice. She is a female cow. Of course, will be the love interest for our lead. It's one of those movies I watch, I'm going, it, it was inoffensive to me. It was inoffensive. It got some chuckles out of me. The voice cast, I thought, did their jobs well. Do all the jokes work? No. The the biddy cheese. Uh, there's a lot of dancing. A lot of partying. I think for some people that might get a bit too old for them. If you're looking for something that has an actual plot. And I wouldn't say it's nearly as witty as with Steve Oderkirk. I could imagine the film being a lot wittier with that ty type of talent. Obviously, of the films he's directed, of the ones I've seen, this is probably my least favorite. But I didn't hate the film either. I, I did it. I know it's weird. There are a couple cute, chuckle-worthy moments. Quite a few, actually. Like when they did pizza and the pizza guy is one of those, Hey, man, how's it going, dude? And the animals are getting the pizza. They're using fake arms so that they're hiding their true selves. And one of the fake arms fall. Oh, I'm sorry, my fake arm fell. Yeah, you can keep it. And the piece of die, Righteous! Yo! No, he, actually, he goes, Yo, I got an arm! And he has another buddy, Righteous, dude! <laughs> and you have that very over the top, but... It's so kind of stupid and it's funny. 
And Steve Voderker did that fairly well. Again, if you watch Ace Ventura when Nature Calls or Trump Out Enter the Fist, he could do that so stupid it's funny better than other filmmakers have done. And I I think the fact that this movie's any worth a shit. I mean it has like what a five point eight or something on IMDb, which is higher than I thought it would be. It's no home on the range. It's nothing that bad or awful or egregious. It, it had a, enough of a noteworthy merit that made it a fun film to watch. Again, it's not classic. It's not underrated. It's not great. But if you're into animated films, if again, if you can overlook some of the crappy CG animation that's direct the video quality of that and that's kind of the thing if they had if it was an actual good looking movie and if you fix some of the humor so it's a bit wittier than it is now okay the, to some of that eats out when early on when they have a meeting but Kevin James is a call and it's a gopher. Oh, I got your nighties. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I got, I'll stay there. And you see the gopher walk out of frame. And then you just hear him smacking the shit. Listen, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt you. And then smacking the shit out of someone off screen. And then come back to the phone. Yeah, okay, you still there? <laughs> like, that moment was kind of funny. There's enough of those moments to make it noteworthy. Just replace the fucking Mr. Boom Bastard Baby Cheese shit and replace it with those. Even more of those. Oh, they're riding motorcycles at the end, and that's why the song's going slow ride. Wah, wah, wah. You know, kind of those jokes, like, eh. okay. So it does have its issues, but did I hate it? No. Did I get some chuckles out of it? Did I like the voice cast? Especially Cam Clark, Rob Paulson, like a Ninja Turtles reunion with those two. two. Those two voices. That was cool. So, overall, watchable. It was a watchable time waster for me. I thought it would be dumpster fire. I don't think it is. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.